Hello, my name is Dr. Anita Muhomoza. I am a pediatrician and a neonatology fellow. I work at the Mulago Specialized Women and Neonatal Hospital in the Neonatal Intensive Care Unit. So we shall go quickly into the process of newborn transportation. Step one, always remember before you touch the baby, before you touch the neonate or anything with a baby, always observe infection prevention. Wash your hands with soap and water or use sanitizer and use a sufficient volume to avoid cross infection and sanitize all areas, observing the five moments of hand hygiene. So prior to transportation of the baby, we are going to first make sure this baby is stable. At whatever point the baby is, the baby should be stable. So we have our preterm baby here who has been delivered. And this baby has been delivered in a lower facility and needs to be transported to a higher level facility. So these are the important steps you need to observe before, during and after transportation of the baby. So before transportation, we are going to look at five major blocks of, that you need to consider. We use the acronym STABLE, the word STABLE, to represent these five components. Where S stands for sugar, T stands for temperature, A stands for airway, B for breathing, L for lab work, and E for emotional support. So we shall go through them one by one. So number one, sugar. We need to check the baby's blood sugar. So there's a glucometer here. We're going to we check the baby's blood sugar and make sure the baby has on a cannula. When you put the cannula, we should give dextrose to the baby because during transportation, this baby may spend some hours moving or some minutes and the mate is prone to getting a low blood sugar. So after putting our cannula, we are going to give our 10% dextrose. Please remember never to give higher concentrations of dextrose to the newborn babies. We usually use 10% dextrose before transportation at a rate of 2.5 mils per kilogram body weight. And we give this as a bolus. So you'll have your line, your cannula on, give the baby some glucose to make sure that your sugar control, your sugar of the baby is normal. So that is the S. And number two, we are going to talk about the T, that is temperature. Temperature is a very important aspect in newborns. So you must always have a thermometer at the newborn unit. Your baby's temperature should always be monitored. So the baby can be monitored using, uh, using the thermometer, using the thermometer probe, the probe that is on the radiant warmer or the incubator, but you must also have a digital thermometer to keep checking the baby's temperature, especially when we are going to move, because the baby may not be moving with a warmer. And during transport, you need to make sure your baby has a normal temperature, and this should be between 36.5 degrees centigrade to 37.5 degrees centigrade. That is the normal temperature range for a newborn baby. So temperature is so important because every time a baby is exposed to very low temperatures or hypothermia, that is anything below 36.5, which can be to varying degrees of hypothermia, so that you increase the baby's risk of death. So for any baby exposed to low temperatures has a threefold chance of dying compared to the other babies who are actually at normal temperatures. So please remember to always transport a baby within the normal temperature range. So the third block we'll talk about is the airway. So for the baby's airway, number one, before you attempt to move this baby, position the baby and look into the airway. If there are any secretions in the airway, you should be having your penguin sucker that you're going to use. If you see any secretions, please suction the airway, make sure the airway is clear because you want to transport a baby with a clear airway. For some babies, if they have no secretions, airway is clear, they're able to move maybe on CPAP or on oxygen on free fall, depending on how the baby is. So there are babies who may not be able to sustain, sustain breathing during movement or during transport. And this is where we bring in what we call an alternative airway. This is the endotracheal tube. But this should be done at a center where there's someone who has the expertise to intubate the baby. So the baby can, if the baby's airway is clear, they are better to move when they are supported. But with a clear airway, position the baby, do suction. But for a baby who is very critical and is unable to sustain breathing on their own, 
we always consider an alternative airway as the safest mode of making sure that baby makes it from one point to another. So this alternative airway is the endotracheal tube. And as I said, it should be placed by someone who has the expertise to place it. So the fourth block we are going to talk about is uh, breathing. So before you transport a baby, you should look at their breathing pattern or make sure the baby is breathing. So if the baby is breathing, then we need to assess if they need support. For all preterm babies, it's very important and critical to transport them on a CPAP. Because preterm babies are born when their lungs are not yet mature. And the CPAP helps to keep their airways open even as they breathe in and out. If we do not put a CPAP, their alveoli or the smaller airways are going to collapse when they breathe out. And it will be more difficult for the baby to take another breath. So they use a lot of energy which causes severe respiratory distress. So it is important to transport this baby on the CPAP and initiate this CPAP right at the point of delivery. Be it in the delivery room or the theater, they should have their CPAP already set. Like we can see this baby is already on a bubble CPAP. For full-term babies who may be having mild distress or just less oxygen needs, we can use what we call the oxygen nasal prongs. And this provides what you call free flow oxygen, which you can still connect as we are moving the baby. So always make sure you consider the breathing because it's critical that the baby you're moving should be able to breathe, should be supported, and should be having very good oxygen saturation that is above 92%. And the heart rate should be good as well. Then the fifth block that we are going to talk about is the lab work. So for some babies, before transportation, we may need to do some urgent tests. So always have your specimen bottles. You have a specimen bottle ready. For example, if a baby has anemia, like you've seen the baby has anemia and you're going to transfer this baby maybe for blood transfusion to another level, or you feel this baby may need a blood transfusion. It's very important when you've taken off a sample for the baby, you can do some quick lab tests, like complete blood count, a blood group, and this will help the clinician receiving the baby at the next level of care to actually act very fast other than waiting to redo the test. So the L stands for lab work, and that is for the quick investigations that you may need to do before this baby is transported, because this will be critical in initiating care at the next level of care. The sixth component, which is the E, that sometimes is overlooked, but we must put emphasis on, is emotional support to the parents. So for every critically ill baby, for every sick neonate, the parents are quite in distress, they are emotionally distressed. They are very anxious and they are not sure of what is next. So it's very important to provide emotional support. And this you can do by one, giving them a proper and thorough update about the condition of the baby. So keep the parents in the loop on what is happening to the baby and what you think may need to be done, especially if you're going to transfer the baby to another facility. As this will help to alleviate their anxieties so they can be able to cooperate and appreciate the whole process. Those are the six main components we need to consider in pre-referral stabilization. So if you're going to move this baby from the in within the hospital, these components should be sufficient, but there is one more. If you're taking the baby to the neonatal unit, then always make sure you have made communication, pre-referral communication, to where you're taking the baby. If you're taking the baby to the neonatal unit, please call them so that you find when the, they are prepared a bed for the baby, they are prepared maybe a CPAP for the baby and oxygen. So it is not good to just move a baby from one point to another without informing the clinicians in the next level of care, whether it is in the neonatal unit or whether it is in another facility. And even more important, if you're going to move the baby from one facility to another, Always make sure to get in touch with a clinician at the next level of care and inform them, update them with a full summary, a, a complete summary of the baby's condition so that they are able to understand what they need to prepare and be, be able to receive the baby and act accordingly to save life. Peripheral communication helps us to be well prepared, reduce on delays and ultimately improve on newborn outcomes.